So one of the areas that I've been working on for the past 10 years is uh, uh, understanding how failure cascades in a network system. Uh, this is um, um, uh, initially, these kind of ideas were coined by economists uh, with respect to the financial market and uh, was referred to as systemic risk. Um, and that is basically when one failure in part of the system causes failure in another part of the system, then that cascades and potentially causes a, a breakdown of the whole system or a big part of the system. And so the question is, how does that happen in an interconnected system? And the examples can be in transportation, it can be in, in the grid, uh, it can be in finance, but it also can be in social revolutions and social change. Uh, uh, opinions cascade and they transmit and so forth. And so we study models of cascades on networks and we try to understand what would trigger something to cascade. It's often a very low probability event that something like this happens. But when it happens, what mechanism, in what mechanisms does it happen? And are there ways for us to be able to monitor and then predict that a cascade is about to happen? Um, and in certain engineering problems, this is very hard. I mean, until today, we don't really understand how cascaded failures occur in the power grid. You know, we have had several cascades occur. The, 2003 uh, failure in New England is a big example of that. And while in fact the models that have been developed summarize how that particular cascade occurs, we don't have models that can predict a new cascade for in occurring. So what we are working on in our research is try to understand if you have a network of dynamical systems that is interacting, and that, so the nodes are talking to each other in a certain way and impacting each other, um, and the, under what conditions in this network something like the 2003 uh, power outage can occur. And if it occurs, how do you stop it? And what is the effect of the network structure on things like this to occur? So would a different network uh, prevent something like this from happening? And you have to remember that a lot of these networks are either physical so if you think about the power grid or the transportation system, there is a network which is the actual physical infrastructure, but then there's also another network which is the information infrastructure. Who talks to whom and how the control architecture is being laid out. And, and we study this interaction of these two layers and how they impact cascaded failures. So I've been looking at this problem for the past 10 years, I would say, in multiple applications and developing theory for uh, how to measure how close is the system to failure and how to mitigate that failure through control strategies. So we have been engaging industry in, in trying to understand how the theory that is being developed on cascaded failures can be adapted to the applications they're looking at. So we've had just about a month, less than a month ago, um, uh, a nice workshop on um, data analytics and finance with focus on risk assessment. And we started talking about systemic risk of, you know, think of it as interconnections of banks or financial institutions with uh, money and credit being flowing around between these, these, these institutions. Um, there are some constraints and regulation and so forth that are embedded at each node. And you want to understand that system and, and, and say something, you know, you want to be able to provide metrics that are um, derived from models that you can look at that will give you a good prediction of the state of that system. Kind of like the weather forecast. We want to forecast the financial, the, the financial system in the world. You wake up in the morning and it says, well, we are 90% uh, safe. Or today, actually, we're only 20% safe. And, and this is why, that kind of thing. This is an abstraction, but something like this is needed. The real question is, well, we have some abstracted models have been developed. I think they're very good. Uh, now the question is, can we get the data, the right set of data, to verify these models, test them, and use the new models for prediction? And we have some challenges for this. One is, well, we don't know exactly which data set, w w what data sets will be the most relevant. We have to experiment with a lot of different kinds of data sets. 
The other thing, of course, in the financial uh, world is that the data is a differentiator. It's the kind of thing that they keep to themselves. Every bank, every financial institution uh, use their own data to make money. And sharing that data to, to assess the risk of the whole interconnected system is not something that is uh, obvious to them. However, while in fact many institutions don't worry about the cascaded failures because it's something that happens once in a blue moon and so forth, they all are cognizant of the fact that it's really critical and important to be monitoring the system. So I think MIT is in a good place because we are not a financial institution and we could be entrusted with data that could be, for example, masked and hidden from everybody else. We collect the data from these different institutions and provide this kind of metric uh, or this kind of predictor for what the state of the interconnected system is. Uh, so the conversations are going in a good direction with industry and that's the way we see the impact is we have to go from the theory to collect the right set of, collecting the right set of data to then beginning to roll out some of the predictions and close the loop and see how clo close what we're doing is to the reality.